Number 73. How do colloids differ from solutions with regard to dispersed particle size and homogeneity? Okay, so to help us out here, I pulled up a picture here that differentiates the difference between a colloid and a solution. The solution is on the left-hand side. So this is basically seawater. So maybe I'll say that. So this would be seawater. And this is the colloid. And a colloid is milk. Okay. Now, let's first talk about it in terms of uh, dispersed particle size, right? So that will help us with this piece of information down here. Now, if we see that we do have two different substances interacting, right? For solutions, you'll always have a solute and you'll have a solvent. The solvent is the, the much bigger amount, which is represented by the, 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 the blue background, right? And in this case, the solvent would be the water, if it's seawater. The solute is the, uh, the red dots. And that is represented by, you know, I guess, quote unquote, the sea, but there's a lot of salt in the sea. So that would, you know, in this case scenario, maybe we'll say that this is NaCl. So seawater classified, you know, very, very salty. So we have NaCl in H2O. For your colloids, you still have the same idea as solute solvent, but they basically go into, uh, they use different terms here. So you have a dispersed particle, dispersed particle, which is basically the idea of a solute. It's the small amount that is being dropped into the dispersion medium dispersion medium. Now for milk, I mean, it's very homogeneous, right? For the dispersion particle for milk specifically, it's a liquid. So liquid particles being dispersed in another liquid. For a colloid, you can have different states. So you can have a solid being dumped into a liquid. You could have a gas being dumped into a liquid, a liquid being dumped into a solid. So, um, that's the idea here. But for particle size, we can say that the difference is, is that the dispersed particles for a colloid are way larger than the, than the solutes that are used for solutions. So that's the one thing. Particle size, the dispersed particle in colloids are larger, they will always be larger, than the solutes in uh, solutions. Now, there's a, there's a third tier here, right? There's solutions which have the smallest amount of solutes, right, the sizing. Then you have colloids, which get a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bigger. And then you have suspensions. Those are the huge, the big, big particles that are being plopped into, you know, your quote unquote solvent or dispersion medium. But here they just wanted us to compare colloids and solutions. Okay, so particle size, your colloids are going to be, you know, bigger particles than your solution particles. Now, homogeneity. homogeneity. Homo in science just means one, right? So we talked about homogeneous mixtures. That's where this is coming from. Homogeneity, homogeneous. So, uh, homogeneity is, is basically talking about in terms of it's acting as one unified solution, quote unquote, or colloid. Now, if we clearly see here, right? Solutions, they're going to be homogeneous all the time. Everything gets dissolved. Um, and you'll always see just one, um, you know, solution. Milk, colloids, by the look of it, they also have some type of homogeneity, 
right? Because if I, you know, give myself a nice big glass of milk, um, you can't see the actual dispersed particles, right? It just looks like one liquid. So on a macroscopic level, on a macroscopic level, which just means things that you could see with your human eye, they are both homogeneous. But once you start getting down to the microscopic level, that's when things get a little bit crazy because colloids have an effect called the Tyndall effect. And the Tyndall effect is basically where if you shine lights on different types of colloids, you will be able to see um, basically your particles. So that's something that solutions can't do. If you shine a light on solutions, you'll, you know, they'll still look homogeneous. So for um, colloids, they will look uh, homogeneous in macroscopic levels, but not microscopic because of this Tidendahl effect. So not homogeneous. Maybe I'll move this over a little bit. Oop, there goes the Y. Oh, the Y was over here. Colloids, not homogeneous for microscopic. And that would be, you know, one difference. So these are small enough in which they won't settle to the bottom, right? If you leave, you know, or if you, you keep milk in the fridge, your particles aren't going to shrink all the way to the bottom, right? It's still always one unified, uh, I guess, you know, colloid. Um, but the idea is that that Tidendahl effect. So this answers the question. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists. And I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard. And I will talk to you in later lessons, okay? All right, bye-bye.